praise, honor, and glory. Let it be all of you on today and absolutely none of us. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you all glory for this is the day you have. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. We refuse to be most miserable, Father, because you've been too good to us. For we are blessed, 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 blessed. For we are a blessed people, and we are a holy nation and a royal priesthood. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 everybody. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I guess I can just dive right on in. And um, I thank uh, God on today uh, for seeing all of you here. Uh, give honor to my pastor and my husband. <laughs> oh, many, many, many years. 37 years. And I thank God for trustees, deacons, and each and every one under the sound of my voice. I just thank God for seeing uh, Sister T, uh, Tracy, Burn, and all of my comrades in the gospel. <laughs> my assassins in the gospel. <laughs> so I thank God for them on today. And I thank God for Jesus. Because if it had not been for him, where would we be? I just thank God. Thank God for my brother being here with me today while I'm speaking, and my sister-in-law, and just all of my relatives. Amen? Amen. Amen. And my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. Getting all the preliminaries out of the way, I'm going to ask that you would just turn to uh, Genesis, the 17th chapter. I'm going to give you the different scriptures, because during the week you can go through them, because I've I might be moving pretty fast. So um, if you can take down the scriptures, we're going to be in Genesis 17, 1 through 7, and Genesis 26, 1 through 5. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, 4 would be second Peter one and three. I'm gonna leave it right there. And as I get there, if I add on, we'll, we'll just add on. Okay, we're gonna start at Genesis the 17th chapter, starting at one. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the mighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thy exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram but thy name shall be Abraham. Abraham actually means the father of many nations. So God wanted to name him according to what he wanted to make him, even when he didn't have children. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Six, and I will make thee exceedingly, exceeding fruitful exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee my God and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in the generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. 
I'm going to stop right there. And I thank God that on today, Pastor prayed for the youth because the youth is really our seed. And just like God began this right from the very start with Abraham, we are Abraham's descendants through Jesus Christ. And we have to really realize that seed that he cut, that covenant he cut with Abraham, that's the same covenant that we have. That's why we don't have to cast away our confidence on anything. Because if we faint not, we have a great recompense of reward when we don't faint, cave in, and quit. Abraham uh, had gotten, as you see in a couple more uh, verses, or you'll find that Abraham and Sarah was a little tired. They got a little tired, so they thought maybe, maybe God is not going to do it this way. You know, maybe he, you know, maybe I could give him, give uh, Abraham my hand servant or something. And, um, and maybe that's how God going to do it. But that was not the plan from God. God said that he was going to allow Sarah to conceive. So if you have a vision and your vision don't seem to be appearing the way it really should. Don't believe the vision. Don't believe that vision. Because if the vision is not clear like God showed you, you keep focused. Don't make an Ishmael like Abraham and Sarah. They got tired. So Sarah figured, oh, maybe God is going to do it another way. No, God is not going to do it another way. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. So if, if he's spoken it, he will make it good. He will make it good. You'll find in uh, some chapters further along, Isaac did the same thing. Rebecca had a, Rebecca had what? Twins. And Isaac, God had made a promise and God had to remind both of them to stay focused. Stay focused. So there will be times when you feel like you don't want to stay focused. Yes. Or the enemy will try to come because that's what he did. Yes. He came in the beginning always. And if you, you have to watch it if you're a, a female. Because I noticed the enemy loves to confront females. Why? Because the man is really, if you notice, Every promise was really given to the male. It was given to their husband. But the devil is a deceiver. So he would like to bring division. And he would like to talk to your mate. to confuse your mate about the vision. But you need to stay focused because if God has given that vision and God said in the beginning that he would bless thee and thy seed will be blessed, then you need to stay focused. You don't need an Ishmael. You don't need anything that God hadn't promised you. If the promise is not from God, you stay focused. Do not leave, lose your focus. Don't create, a, that's what the problem today right now, they're fighting about right now. Right now in Israel. That's Ishmael and Isaac, the sinners. Yes. Oh yes it is. Abraham, even though God still kept his word, Ishmael still was alive. Ishmael is not the promise. Isaac is. 
That's what they're fighting about right now. See, if you eliminate your Ishmaels, we won't have that problem right now. So it's vitally important that we stay focused. Even women, you got to be sharp. If you are female in Christ, in the Bible, I think it's in Galatians, or one of the uh, Colossians or Galatians, where it says there is no male or female. So it's important that we hear, that all of us is able to hear from God. Because if we hear the enemy coming in, sounding anything opposite than the scriptures, we need to say no. No, we are not, just like at, in the beginning, she could have said no. God said we're not to eat of that fruit. But because she let him deceive her, which we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to be deceived by the devil's devices. We're going to stay focused. And that's what a lot of the world is receiving today. Because a male seed should be in charge. And that's the way God really has it to be. That's his son. That's, that's how it goes. And any time, whether it's in your home, it's your husband. And then it's them. Whether it's in a church, it's the pastor. Guess what? Is there male, male uh, female pastors? Yes, there is. Why? Anytime a male will not take his place, God will use anyone. He will use anyone. Is it his first preference? No, it's not. But if the rocks can cry out for you, if you don't praise him, if he can use the rocks, he will use anything. That's why it's important to stay focused. Because the enemy, the deceiver, he is out to kill, steal, and to destroy. And God comes that we have life and life more abundantly. So if there's not abundant life going on in your life, in any area, know it is a deceiver need. He don't care who he's whispering and what ear he's whispering in. Long as he can get your attention. Yes. If you look at Matthew, fourth chapter, I believe it is, he even tried to whisper to Jesus. Oh, yes, he did. Jesus has fasted. He was hungry for 40 days. Very hungry. And he said, cast these stones into bread. Jesus was very focused. He said, man don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. Yes. And that's what we need to be saying. If God has not said it, we should not be saying it. If God say we heal, then we need to be saying we heal. We don't need to be adding what the doctor is. You, you can go to the doctor if you want to. But those scriptures don't. Is, is the, when, when something happened to us, the scriptures tell us normally to show ourselves to a priest. Call on the elders. And let them pray over you. And the prayer of faith will heal you. Hallelujah. But usually, is that what we do? And I'm saying this, and I'm really glad it's quiet. Because it's, a, it's time out. We late in the game now. Jesus is on his way back. We do not need to have things occurring that we know by reading the scriptures, we know it don't tell us to do that. Come on now. Come on now. We read scriptures and the scriptures say 
you know, let the sick say they heal. We walk around telling everybody how healed we are, how sick we are, when the scriptures declarely tell us to say we are healed. Yes, yes, yes. It's still a way of, I, I've gone, I've been to a doctor, and they looked at me, and they, they said whatever they said, ran tests and everything. You know what I, I wrote on the paper? I am healed. I'm not coming in here just saying this because I'm before the people. But when you go out that door, and my brother can contest to this, he knows the life I live. If anything go on with one of my brothers or my sisters or somebody, I'm going to say they healed. I am not going to uh, go to them and tell them about a doctor or nothing like that. Now, you, you can do whatever you want. I'm just telling, trying to tell you. If we're going to walk by faith, let us walk by faith. And I'm saying all of this because this is a part of the covenant that he cut with Abraham. He said, and then you'll find in Corinthians, I, I believe it is where he given us the second chapter, where he given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, where God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And, and it's in uh, Peter as well. It's nothing that Jesus haven't rendered to his people. He's, his work is over. The job is done. He's not hanging back up on no cross. He's not, you know, like, Lord, I'm waiting on you. No, you're not waiting on him. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get in line with him. He's waiting for you to say you're rich. And how many of us will do that? Just think about it. Even if you got a dime in your pocket, you won't let somebody know you got that dime. God didn't tell you to say that. He said, say you're rich. Just say you're rich. How he's going to get anything to you if you won't walk by faith? Hallelujah. Yes. He has to get you to say it so you can have it. Proverbs, what, 18 and 21? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It's going to be a manifestation of time. If you don't say it, he can't, it's not going to be manifested. He needs you to speak it. Get out of this thing. Oh, I'm quiet. You can be quiet all you want, but when you get in your closet with God, you better be talking. You better be speaking, because he don't answer not saying nothing. He knows what you're thinking, but he still requires you to say it. So if you're not saying you heal, why are you looking for healing? And then when you get sick, you want to, we, people want to call and call somebody. No, that's not the time. You need to say you're healed. He's given us all things that pertain to life and God. Nothing is missing and nothing is broken. It, your mind should be in perfect peace if you're keeping it on him. Such thing as saints going seeing psychiatrists and stuff. And if your mom, he is the psychiatrist. How? We need to keep our minds stay on him, and he will. He has made a covenant with us, and um. He's never going to break it. He will never alter that covenant. Yeah, no. It's not him altering it. Yeah. It's important that you don't off, yeah. alter it. Yeah. Because if you get off his word, you will not receive his promises. Yeah. You won't. They won't be manifested. Yeah. You're walking around wondering why I'm coughing. Start saying you're here. I guarantee you, if you say it long enough, that cough will leave. He's not a liar. He's not a liar. You should be able to count 
on him as being faithful and true. And if he's faithful and true, why don't you do what he say do? Mm -hmm. See, it's important that we take time and examine ourselves to make sure we really in the faith. Because a lot of times we, we, we say we're in the faith and we really say we sick, we worried, we poor, uh, we got all these different problems. And when we go on our job or wherever we go, we're just like the world. There is a clean cut difference between holy and unholy. It is a clear difference. Oh yes it is. They're mean. You're kind. They hate. You love. This, I call it the upside down kingdom. Flip flop. Whatever the world is, you turn it over and come over here, it's totally different. If someone mistreats you, you have to do good for the evil that's being done. You know what I found out? If you exercise it, it won't even bother you. But see, we won't even exercise our senses. We should, we should have our senses under control by the Holy Ghost. But we don't allow the flesh. We should not, I'm going to say, allow the flesh to control us so much that the saints should be in control. Through the Holy Ghost, not through our flesh or ourselves. But the spirit should be able to speak in us and say, no, 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 no. Ooh. It's not worth it. Because if you do that, you'll be just like, like them. Somebody has to be a light. We are the light that sit upon a hill that cannot be hidden. We ought to love being a light. We ought to enjoy being peculiar. We ought to enjoy being holy. We ought to enjoy being a, a royal priesthood. But why do we get among people and try to act like, or maybe don't want to act like it because we different from them? We is supposed to be different. If you take away your peculiarness, you've taken away your holiness. Yes, you have because you've been set aside in a part just for God's use. Not your will, his will to be done. I can remember years ago when, when he was first teaching me this, I used to say, come on God, give me a break. I wanna be angry for at least 10 minutes, okay? Just give me 10 good minutes. That's all I need. Ten minutes. I just want ten minutes to be mad. Okay? And I can hear him saying in me, I need you to put that away. Because I didn't do you that way. I loved on you even when you missed it. I loved on you even when you was unloved. And when I heard him say that, immediately I had to put it away. I, in the beginning, I wanted 10 minutes of mad. But later on, I found that it don't even, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. Let it go. Because you want his glory revealed through you and in you to the other person. And all shall see that his glory reign in you richly. He want his glory revealed through all of us. It's nobody.
everybody in here today, wherever you go, somebody should be able to see and tell that you are peculiar. You are not like the world. You've been set aside, set apart for the master's use only. Only. Will you, and guess what? His, the things, his way is really easy. But the devil got us thinking that it's hard. He said, take on my yoke. My burdens are light and my yoke is easy. So when we get off thinking everything God say is going to be hard to us. It's not hard. It's hard telling lies. It's hard being a deceiver. It's, that's the hard part. Don't let the devil fool you. It's hard to go against the grain of God. It's easy to submit to God. He's even give you, he got seven ways to escape, escape that enemy. He will speak in you. Then he'll send, he'll send a couple people to you. He will do it all kinds of ways to, to get you to go his way and make the right choices. But he is not going to force you. He is such a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's a gentleman. Just like Abraham. He didn't force him. He stood, now he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Right while we in the middle of it, he's right there. Yes. Can you hide when David was Bathsheba or any of them sins or any of that? You or when uh Reuben, when Reuben might have uh when they threw uh Joseph in in a pit, he was right there. It ain't nothing we can do that we can hide from God. Nothing. So we need to just come clean. You can't hide. There is no hiding place other than God. He said that 91 is the secret place. That's the only hiding place. That's the only hiding place. And I say that because he made this covenant with us. He made it with Isaac. Jacob and Abraham, and he will never, ever, ever change that covenant. He will never change that covenant. And then we, this is what we said. Oh, we're not like God. You know, God is always faithful. You should be too. If you are now transformed into his image through his son, you should be just like him. Your job should not find you unfaithful. Your mate should not find you unfaithful. Your neighbor should not find you unfaithful. No. Mm -hmm. Because now you are a new creature in Christ. All things is passed away and behold, all things are made brand new. Amen. You are new in Christ Jesus. And the Spirit of God should be leading us, which is not really you, but it's the Christ in you, yes. which is the hope of glory. Yes. So he should be leading and guiding and governing you, not you. Yes. You should be living this life through him. Yes. So I said all of that to say this, all the way up until today, that same covenant is still alive. He said that he will make it good into the coming of Jesus Christ. When God speaks and he says something, he don't lie, you can count on it, and guess what? He's going to do it. He's going to fulfill it. If he's spoken it, it will be fulfilled. He will not stop you from making uh, choices, whether they're right or whether they're wrong, because he's such a gentleman. He will, he will send you people in your, in, in, in your path that may warn you to not make a bad decision. And a lot of times he will give you maybe several people. He, got, he says several ways of escape. He will have you read a word. He will maybe have you turn on the TV and it'll be a word. So it's always a word somewhere that he's talk, constantly talking to us 
through, he might even have you read a billboard. I've seen billboards be a blessing to me. He might have his flesh. As many days I read it, it's been a blessing to me. So he's constantly talking to us. And here you see God with Abraham, he kept that covenant. Sarah was, what, 100 years old? She was well, way past having a, a baby age. But guess what? Boom. He kept his word, didn't he? So if he gives you a promise, and he gives me a promise, whatever promise he give us, he will keep it. He will make it good. Don't cast away your confidence, because there is great recompense of reward if you faint not. That's in Hebrews. So guess what? You have to keep the faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God, God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I've learned to dissect the Bible. A lot of times we read and we want to read right through. Every little word can speak to you. Every, if you would take it slow, every word means so much. Uh, ever la everlasting covenant. And then he said he would exceed. He would exceed that. Oh my God. He said whatever you come to him asking if you can believe it that he can even exceed what you believe it for. That's some power. But God, help us. Help us to ask and place it in our heart and then help us not to think we just had some kind of dream. You know, it's just a dream. I ate some pizza or something. No. Can you imagine if Joseph would have thought that? Oh, it's just a dream. I don't need to share it with my brother and my father and them. I don't need to share it with them. No. It's not just a dream. It was God talking to him, telling him that he was going to rule and he was going to save a nation, really, and that all of them was going to end up coming to him. Now, I'm going to say this. That's like David when um, uh, Samuel uh, had to uh, anoint David. He went to Jesse's house. David was not even in the house. He was the youngest child, and he was not even in the house. Because know why? They didn't really consider him as much. He was in the, he was in the field. He was in the field. Oh, that's just David. He just tended to the sheep. You know, he just tended to the field. You know, and so uh, Sam said, "You have any more sons?" He said, mm -hmm, we got one just out, you know, just out in the field, you know. So you'll find that in Samuel, in uh, 1 Samuel. And uh, as you, uh, as they went on, they don't doubt that when they brought him in the house and Samuel went to pour in the oil, the oil went right on down. He said, this is the man. Now, can you imagine what all the others felt like? Now, I'm going to say this. David was anointed to be king to save Israel. See? It wasn't just for him. It wasn't just for him. It was to deliver Israel. Goliath got big and start wanting to take over. And God had to raise up somebody to deal with Goliath. And Iliad and the, uh, the other the other brothers, it's about my three of them, David's older bro brothers. Ilya, see, he said, what you coming down here for? He thought David was arrogant. He thought David was arrogant because David shared 
what God had placed in him. So guess what? When it all was said and done, even though David wasn't at the fight, David slew Goliath. So he was anointed for such a time as that. Now, going to Joseph. Joseph. Younger brother. He shared his dream with his father and his brothers. They did not like it. They did not like it. But God had given him that vision. The vision was to save them. It wasn't for him. It was going to save all of them. So, oh no. They hated him for the dream. Then he told the second one. And then they tried to murder him. How in the world do you murder someone who God gave a vision just because you don't like the vision? No. You don't because it's to save all of us. No, you don't get mad at that visionary. No, you don't. Because God gave the vision that we all would be saved. So today is the day we don't have to worry. We don't have to be sick. We don't have to be poor and we don't have to die. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and he was victorious, he has delivered all things unto our hands. And guess what? When we know this truth, this truth frees us from the hand of the enemy. The last enemy to be defeated is death. And somebody got to defeat it. Because everybody is not going to die. So you see, if you did not know this truth, the enemy can kill, steal, and destroy. But God sent someone to tell you, do not let him bamboozle you. Don't do it. Don't let him do it. Because if you do, he will alter your destiny. And you don't want that. So get in agreement with God. If God said we heal, we heal. If God said we, we free, we free. If God said we got victory, who in the world want to fight about having victory? I've seen people, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've seen people, Arr, looking at me like, Arr. I'm like, what are you doing looking at me like, Arr, because I'm telling you, you more than a pompous, you're a world of a pompous, and God is giving you, freely giving you all things that pertain to like, what in the world you got to earn in your chest for? Get that out of your, you know what, I just, I tell my children this, and my, my children, Albert and Emmanuel, grew up in my house, and I never, ever, let them give me a displeasure on their face. All right. When I was raising them, I told them, from baby, do not give me a look on your face that you don't like what I'm saying to you. Mm. Because know why? I have your best interest in mind. Yes. I'm going to give you what God gives me, and that's going to be the best thing for you. Yes. So do not give me displeasure on your face. When I'm loving on you, Come on. you don't even know you're being loved on. You got this stress on your face for what? Because somebody loved you? Yeah. <laughs> Love you anyhow. <laughs> Jesus. So what I'm saying, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know what? How in the world do you walk around with a frown when the joy of the Lord is your strength? Wait, you let the devil sap your strength. My God, I am not going to give him that, that much power over me. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, no, he, he don't have power over us. Genesis 1 and 26 declare that God has given us power over all unclean spirits, everything upon this earth. He's given one in 26. He said, I've over the sea, the fowl. The only thing through us, God works through us, but he's given us the power. He don't want us to let things rule over us. We need to be ruling it through him. So there's no way you mean to tell me you can't let your joy be full. The Bible say 
let it be. Put on it like a garment, yes. like that sweater here. Yes. When I get up in the morning, yes. I might feel a little heavy because sometimes the, it might be cold outside. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I shake myself and I let my joy be full for the morning. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I tell my dead hair babies when they come in here and they looking like they still want to be asleep, I say, wake up. Because life, you got to learn how to not be moved by your emotions. Yeah, yeah. Stop wearing your emotions and walk in power. Don't let your emotions dictate to you what you go. They are there to let you to let you know something is there. But guess what? If it don't line up with the word of God, then no way. I'm not receiving it. Mm -mm, I'm not receiving it. Anything that don't line up, anything that come to mess with my destiny, I come to take authority over you. Yes, I do. And if you're not in line with God, I have authority over you. Is the truth? Amen. We have authority over demons. Yes. We have authority over unclean spirits. Yes. And guess what? When you walk in those spirits, God can't even hear you. Mm. He can't. If you sit here, and you mean, and you're, God said, mm -mm. until you get it right with your brother or your sister, none of your prayers is heard. Yes, he do. Oh, yeah. yes, it is. You can't, you can't continue to just be, you can't. He won't let you. The spirit, and you know what? A lot of times we want to deceive ourselves into believing, um, hmm, I can be mad. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Not if you won't be in this kingdom. You can be mad in the world. The world will give you mad, angry, hate, murder. It'll give you all that to be. But guess what? In this kingdom, long suffering, temperance, joy, he going to pull you right on off. But yes, he is. That's exactly what he going to do. He is not going to go having you running around huffing and cuffing and with people. He's not going to do it. Because that's not his spirit. He is a gentleman. He's a gentleman. And that's why I always told my children, I'm raising little gentlemen. Yes, because I'm raising to you to be Christ-like. And guess what? Christ, even if you choose to be gay, he will not stop you. He won't. He will send a word to tell you that it's not of him. But he will not stop you from making that choice. Right. Right. If you choose right. to sin, he will not. He will send a word to stop you. But that's all. He, he will let you make your own choice. He is such a gentleman. He's not. Do we want, he, he wants you to, because uh, you know why? He wants us to choose him. He jealous. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes. He is extremely jealous over us. Yes. We are the apple of his eye and his daily delight. And guess what? He don't, when, when, when things come to disturb us, he don't like it. He don't like it. He said, cast it on me. I don't want you disturbed. I'll take it for you. He want us clean. He want us with a clean heart and pure hands before him so that when we go before our co-workers, our loved ones, or whoever it is, that our heart is right towards him. Today, if you hear his voice, pardon not your heart. Like the day when they hardened their heart and they couldn't even enter. They couldn't even enter the promises because they had a hard heart. So he's saying to us, don't let that be us. Don't have a hard heart. If we can hear God, God is love. Yes. And, and I want to say this. No, we're not worried about whether somebody speaks to us or not, whether because we already know through him that we're going to walk in love. But it's vitally important that you do. It is that you walk in love. It is. Because all the gifts that he has granted unto us, guess what? It means nothing if we don't have love. 
It means absolutely nothing without love because he himself is love. And if we're without him, if we're without love, that means we're without him. And I say this, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean this with my whole heart. And I'm going, I'm going to drill it really heavy. You must walk in love. You can have all the other gifts, like talking and speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, and doing all that. But the one gift you've got to have is love. You've got to have love. Because he himself is love. And if you don't have that, you don't have him. And see, we just need to get honest. And we need to just up front tell you. If you're not walking in love, you're without him. Yeah. You really are. He's not want, he don't want to leave you, but you leaving him. Mm. And when the end comes, that one gift can hinder us. because he won't know us. Because how can I, I be loved? If I was loved, I'm loved, right? How can I be without it and still be me? I will cease being me. So that's what he's trying to tell us. If I'm in you, how in the world can love not be in you? If I'm in you. Now, if it's not there, then you know I'm not there. Yeah. So I said all of that because I do. I hope you ponder on this this week. I, I'm not afraid. I'm not. I'm not afraid to tell y'all the truth. I am not scared. ST, <laughs> <laughs> I don't live in the <laughs> And the bottom line is. This is when someone really loves you. If someone can honestly tell you these things, and I mean, I'm not, not to beat you on brawl, but I'm, I mean, just to share with you like this, that's love. That is love. When you share the word of God with someone and you mean it from your heart, that's love. You are being loved. You're not being hated on. Now the enemy will try to tell you, I can't stand her. It's something about I can't stand. It's something about, you know, he'll, that's what he want, you know, he'll put in your ear. But see, you can be still be in love, and the enemy will tell you, oh, I can't stand her. You know, don't, don't let him deceive you. Because we think, oh, I'm going to heaven without, no, not if you ain't loving on your brother. No, you're not. That's the one piece that you have to have. And when you look at uh, Corinthians, I think it's the 12th or 13th chapter, you'll find joy. That's another one. Love, long-suffering, temperament, meekness. All of it is a part of him. Love, that's him. If you don't have those qualities, you've got to have love. You've got to have it. That's, that's, he himself is love. So I just want to say all of that to let you know. Paul talked about in the last days, it's going to be very vital that we all understand and Keep the scriptures because deception is going to be great in the last day. Mm. Yeah. The enemy would love to come and twist just one word. Mm. You don't need each other. Yes, we do need each other. Yeah. We have different gifts. And when we bind them gifts together, we are arsenal to the devil. Mm. When we all come together, and you have a different gift, and I have a different gift, and this one have a different gift, and some may have more than others, and some might have only one, but use the one you have. It's exactly what you need. Do not hide your gift. 
do not hide your talents. You bring everything to the table and give God your very all. Amen? Amen. So I'm saying all of that because it's vitally important that we are a body and God has called us here and he rightfully fitted us. Yes. If you've been called to this body and you've been called to Christ, yes. you are a part of the body of Christ and we all have gifts and they differ. <clears throat> but when we come, if I have David, everybody didn't have David yet. Everybody didn't have Joseph yet. They were, uh, they were captains. You know, they was the head. They, actually, it was, he was the king, David was. And um, the point I'm making is, you might be the arm, you might be a foot, you might be a hand, but we all are a part of one body. And you don't find an arm saying, I don't need you. And you don't find a finger saying, I don't need to be on this hand. No, we all are a part of the body. And if I would remove a finger or a foot or a hand, it would affect my body. So amen. amen. I want to say that I pray that you will continue in the faith. And in these last days, you need to sharpen. We need to sharpen. Iron sharp. Uh, iron sharp. Sharpen iron. Excuse me. And uh, we need to be encouraging each other until the coming of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because as much as we gather together, we really gather strength. So, I say to you all, God has called us to this covenant and to the coming of Jesus Christ, and he's going to fulfill it. We're looking at what's going on in Israel and places, and guess what? It's right on time for the Bible. I am saying this to say that it will not get better. It will not get better. If you continue to read your scriptures, even though the joy in our, we excited because we know he's coming back. Yeah. But the world is, the end is near. It's near. So I'm encouraging you as we go to the end, sharpen anything you can find, search yourself, anything you find that's not like God, Tell God, I, I, I re, help me to remove that thing because when you come back, I, I want to see you in glory and and we also going to be rewarded. We are not saved by our works, no. but our works will follow us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are going to get rewards for doing it God's way. So, Amen. amen. So, I, I want to encourage you and keep the faith and stay faithful and continue to walk in love with all men. And God is not just asking us to do it with our brothers and sisters, he even asking us to do it with our enemies. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it's not just when we get in here. Guess what? If you got somebody that don't even like you, you ought to do good. Amen? Amen. Yes, he can. 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 Y